What's good everyone, it's a dig here reporting for No Jumper and today we're here to talk about Juice World. and rather than focusing on the career or the music of Juice in and of itself, instead today I wanted to take a look at the moments leading up to his gigantic rise to stardom and in particular hone in on the team that formed around him. On B's knees from Death Race to Love, Juice World raps and this is something that's often forgot about in a hip hop ecosystem to fans and that is the importance of who backs you, who's invested in you and the importance of a team behind you. Pick any top tier artist and there is a good chance there is a very well known group, entity or person that already had success and knew the industry that is behind them that's helping them open up the doors for their success. Drake and Nicki had Birdman slash Lil Wayne, Kendrick had Dr. Dre slash Top Dog, J. Cole had Jay-Z, Big Sean had Kanye West etc etc. And this isn't only for the older artists, all the way down to Playboy Cardi who had ASAP Rocky and the mob, Lil Yachty who had coach KLP, or even Lil Uzi who had DJ Drama and Don Cannon. Especially in rap, it's easy to just see the rapper on the front line, but really there is a whole army behind them setting up the place. And for Juice World, this was Grade A Productions, a company started by fellow Chicago natives Lil Bibi and G Money, who Juice World would sign to early on in his career. And in addition to Juice World's team, it's also important to mention Peter J and also G Herbo. It's kind of overwhelming, but at the same time, I try not to dwell on it too much because uh, I know I'm like the company I keep, they're real business savvy and I know they, they know what the fuck is going on so I could, you know, I could feel comfortable. So let's have a look at these people one by one. Lil Bibby is a name that a lot of people may be familiar with, but perhaps some may not know the history behind. Hailing from Eastside Chicago, he came up around that 2012 and 2013 period with tracks like Kill Shit, which was with G Herbo, who went as Lil Herb at that time. No short shooter zone and off the court, shoot a nigga off his port. And how we move, which featured King Louie. That's how it be, I put this money shit before me and my little homie just did three. Around this time, Bibi was entrenched deep into the burgeoning Chicago drill scene, and over the coming years, Bibi would release project after project and was getting hella cosigns that put him in a position to be a huge solo artist. From being dubbed as quote the future by Drake to landing on the 2014 double XL cover. In an alternate timeline, Bibi would have blew up around this time and become a mainstream star in his own right. However, his story as a solo artist took an unfortunate path and a shady label situation would cause major issues surrounding the release of his music as he's touched on various times. Free baby man, I was, I'm in a label situation right now and I'm almost free. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was in a little jam for a little minute, so that that been a movement, Free Bibby, you know what I'm saying? Really wanted to get out that situation for a long time, that's why I haven't been holding my music for a little minute. And he also said in this interview, which happened in September of 2019, that he was out of a studio for a year and a half, and he was waiting to get out of his contract to release music again. So basically, what happened here was, Bibby just started to transform, more so from the music side of things, to the business side of things, and the second person in this equation, who is Lil Bibby's business, Business partner in grade A is G Money, who you would have heard Juice World reference numerous times. G Money has less of a public story as he was never a rapper or a personality like Bibby was. However, it's interesting to note that him and Bibby are brothers, and G Money is someone who's very invested into the business side of things. Now, the third person to this equation is Peter J, who became Juice World's manager and was more involved in the day to day process for Juice. Hailing from Chicago himself, Peter got a start in the industry doing live shows for Chicago artists back in 2016 like Dirk and Herbo. Additionally on the side of this he would do merchandise for people like Famous Dex and around this time he was pretty well connected in the Chicago scene and already had a relationship with Bibi through the live show work he was doing. Then eventually when Bibi linked up with Juice and started working with them he asked Bibi if he could get involved. So that's kind of three key people right there, add G Herbo into that mix and between those four people by the time they got involved with Juice between all of them you had well over a decade decade worth of experience within the music industry. Bibi said in this interview, quote, since I first got in, I was never just an artist. I was always in on the business
business side of things. I'm always with top music people in the music business and I'm just all ears. Okay, so that kind of sets the scene for the team. Now for the plays they made that put Juice into the positions he needed to be. Now, according to this interview here with Peter, Bibi started to get involved with Juice in September of 2017. And by the time they did, he was already fairly well developed musically, having already released the cult classic mixtape, Juice World 99, which has now iconic Juice songs such as Moonlight. Don't know when I met you, but I met you. Don't know why I love you, but I love you all. And lucid dreams. It all began with G Herbo's DJ, DJ Victorious, who would put G Money onto Juice, and then G Money would put Bibby onto Juice, and once hearing Juice's music, he knew he was special. And um, he played me the song, All Girls the Same, and I was like, all right, that's a good song. And then uh, he sent over some YouTube links, and I heard Lucid Dreams. When I heard Lucid Dreams, I'm like, oh, now this is like probably the best song that I heard in about 10 years. So that, that's when I really knew and I kind of like, okay, we gotta go with this, you know what I'm saying? So I got to making all the calls. And then when Peter got involved with the movement, it was January of 2018. And according to Peter, when this happened, Juice only had 1,000 followers. Quote, it was a leap of faith going on to say, I was in a position like, all right, you gotta be ready to drop everything and put all your eggs in. Now, ancillary to Juice World and Grade A Productions are two key figures. Interscript Records, who Juice would eventually sign to via Grade A, and Cole Bennett slash Lyrical Lemonade. Cole Bennett, at this stage, both in terms of who he is and his impact on Juice World's career really needs no introduction. Simply put, without Cole Bennett's co-sign, especially early on with videos like All Girls Are The Same and Lucid Dreams in February and May of 2018 respectively, Juice's career would have been very different. His pure talent probably would have got him to the success he had eventually, but this fast-tracked it for sure. And having a look at this Google Trend data for Juice World from late 2017 to the middle of 2018, noticing the spikes when the Cole Bennett video Videos dropped, you can tell how much it helped, and this essentially took Juice from a relatively unknown SoundCloud artist to someone with literally millions of millions of views. And this Cole Bennett play was set up by Lil Bibby, who already had enough of a relationship with Cole Bennett to make the calls and set up the shoots for Juice. And this is those plays behind the scenes I was talking about earlier. Without Bibby already having that relationship with Cole and connecting Cole with Juice, all those first Cole Bennett videos and all the rest after that possibly never happened. And again and maybe Juice's career goes on a different path. And secondly is the Interscope Records deal, which was reportedly worth $3 million and came out in March of 2018. We literally hear all the time about artists who get in mess up label situations, which kind of forces their career either to a halt or a downward spiral, more so due to a poor business decision rather than their music. And Grade A was the one responsible for setting up the Interscope play for Juice. He remembers in this interview here that Juice at that time was getting big tickets ticket offers from various labels. One of them was Def Jam, and at one point in time, Def Jam were willing to sign Juice, so Juice could have easily ended up under the Def Jam umbrella. However, once they did the videos with Cole Bennett, Bibi knew that he was worth more than what Def Jam were offering, so he decided to go with Interscope instead. Now, this might seem like a small minor detail, but it's interesting to think about what would have happened if he had signed to Def Jam. If you're unfamiliar, in 2017, Def Jam got a new president, Paul Rosenberg, who left in in February of this year, which means that he would have been there to handle Juice's career. And if you're unaware, it's basically no secret that Def Jam, under the regime of Paul Rosenberg, wasn't exactly the best label for new signees. A Forbes article on the topic of him leaving said, quote, but after a signing boom that didn't produce new rap stars and just four Billboard chart chopping rap albums, the Rosenberg Def Jam experiment appears very much to have underwhelmed and underperformed. And when you think about it, that is very, very accurate. People like 07 O'Shake or Val A both showed a lot of promise on their come up, but after getting into that good music and Def Jam ecosystem, their careers just didn't explode in that major way and how fans would have expected them to. And it's interesting to think about a parallel timeline where Juice had signed to Def Jam and how that would have played out. Would Juice have suffered the same fate as these artists who didn't go on to have their success after being ushered into Def Jam, or would he 
have been okay, who knows, but I think it's one of those details that might seem very minor in the grand scheme of things, but really had a huge impact on the overarching career of Juice, and I think the decision to go with Interscope was a savvy one from Bibi and the Great A team, and considering the commercial success of his music, you can't really argue against it, and in addition to the label situation, as I said, I think the Cole Bennett videos at the start especially were like the catalyst to bring in Juice's music to the masses, and as I've explained that this video, it was really the people and the team around Juice that kind of set up these plays to make them happen. But yeah, pretty much everything right there kind of leading up to the explosion of Juice's music in terms of the people around him. Hope you guys enjoyed this video kind of looking back at the history of Juice's come up. If you guys did and you want to check out more of my content, link to my channel will be in the description. But as always, if you haven't watched other No Jumper videos on screen right now, make sure to and hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.